Welcome back to the channel, I'm Gary Martin and in today's video we're going to be talking about what's changed, what a title list is claiming has improved in the SM10 versus the SM9 and we're going to be having a look at some spin numbers with some pitch shots from 50 yards and some pitch shots from 80 yards to see you know, if there is any gains in performance. So Titleist claim that they never release a new SM wedge unless they can improve on the previous one. And one of the first points to mention is that in this series they've enhanced the look. And I would go on record and say I agree. I think this new sort of black, I would call it a gunmetal looking finish, is stunning. It's not got the glare of last year's brush steel. So on the toe and heel, you've got less glare. So when you look down at the SM10 from the top, it looks more one piece. It doesn't look as though, I think what they've done with the SM9, they've, they've got this glare on the toe and heel so that the face stands out and it draws you into the middle of the face. But I don't think it's that traditional look that Titleist, you know, have always sort of gone for. And I think as a better golfer, and I'd like you to sort of, you know, put these side by side the next time you go in a pro shop and let me know your opinion. But I prefer the more solid look where the, there's, the finish is more consistent across the entire face. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit some shots from 50 yards with the SM9 to get some numbers, and then we'll get some shots with the SM10 to get some numbers. I'm gonna have a start to look at the spin results. So that just looks stunning, that. There's no glare at all. It's that darker, duller finish, but because it's not entirely black, it's not the darkest finish to do. It does, I don't look down at that, I think the head looks smaller. Really good from top. So as well as enhancing the looks, Titleist have varied the thickness of the milling grooves between the big grooves to give you a more consistent spin in a variety of lies. Now I'm gonna be hitting quite a few shots today, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of select the better strikes so we can get a little bit more accurate data. So Titleist have not only distributed a little bit more weight higher up in the face, they've distributed a little bit more weight towards the toe. So what they're trying to do is get that ball from going left, which you know if you watch my channel, you'll know that is one of my problems are trying to get that club releasing better to try and maintain the loft on the club face which is crazy because I'll show you the pattern of shots I've hit in a minute and there's a clear difference in dispersion between SM9 and SM10 and the SM10 is a lot straighter but I'm more interested to know if that higher centre of gravity has actually lowered the ball flight because that's one of the major claims is that with the SM10, you're gonna get a lower penetrating flight but maintain the high spin, which would be awesome if that's true. Let's have a look at these shots then. So just before we compare any results, just look at this pattern of shots here between you know the SM10 in blue and the SM9 in red. There's no coincidence there, there's no anomalies. You know, you can clearly see before I select, you know, the best five strikes that, you know, the pattern where the SM9 is releasing a little bit more and they've, you know, that must have been something that they've noticed a, a pattern of shots to, to change that center of gravity. Wow, so this just clarifies, I've selected the best five strikes of each wedge and it shows that the dispersion is definitely tighter with the SM10 and it's certainly a lot straighter. Now, if you look at ball speed, it's pretty consistent. So, you know, that's suggesting that I've, I've struck the ball, you know, the same with each wedge pretty much. Uh, but launch angle, it is very, very fractionally lower, as Titleist did suggest. But as a consequence, the spin's actually a little bit lower. So you're getting that little bit stronger ball flight, a little bit straighter ball flight. But as a consequence, you know, I've, I look like I've lost probably about 3,000 revs of backspin. Um, you know, I have used the same ball. In terms of actual distance, it's within a it's within a yard, so it's getting the same distance, but on a little bit of a different ball flight, a little bit more stronger and penetrating ball flight. And in all fairness, 
you know, I feel like that's probably where in a 60 degree wedge, what we're testing today is that people, especially high handicappers and mid handicappers can lose that little bit of control, you know, where, you know, the ball just rockets up in the air and they have no control in the wind whatsoever. So actually, I think that's probably, probably the ball flight that's going to be a bit more helpful to the mid to handicappers and certainly the low handicappers who are aspiring to have that little bit more tour and, and lower trajectory in them shorter pitch shots let's have a look then at fuller shots ones where you know you I, I would imagine we're going to create a lot more backspin let's see if the backspin in the sm10 increases and it matches the sm9 or actually outperforms the sm9 in the fuller shots where you're really going to need that stopping power with it yeah, just come in. Dan's turned up. He's turned up 20 minutes early. He's, he's in after me for some practice. And you've actually got the brush steel wedge, haven't you? Yeah, I've got the uh, brush steel finishing the SM9 58 degree wedge. So I'm going to show you the, the SM10 for the first time. And I want you to give the subscribers your honest opinion. You can say whatever you want. There's no influence. What's, what do you notice? Uh, what's the difference? big difference you can see? Um, well, under the light, there's definitely less glare. And it's a bit of a wider footprint compared to the uh, SM9. What, you feel like that head looks bigger than the SM9? Yeah, it feels like um, it's a bit more o a bit more open at address. Like, I, I feel like I wouldn't really need to open it up that much. I think that's the reduced glare, because I think on the SM9, it brings it draws the face in, doesn't it? Because you've got that toe and heel that look a little bit separate from the face. Yeah. And I think with that one, because it's a consistent finish, it makes the head look actually a little bit bigger, would you agree? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I agree with that, yeah. Question then, which is the nicest finish? Which do you prefer? Because everyone's opinion is different, and Dan might, you know, it might differ yeah. from me. I like the sort of like the darker, um, sort of less, sort of shiny, sort of finish on this. But again, I like the um, the sort of the shine that yeah. went in the in the bag because I like I like shiny things. I'm a bit of a magpie, so. But yeah, I like them both. But you know, I'm, I'm probably not likely to change to this because I mean, like, this is fairly new. I got this right before this came out, which is kind of annoying, but. Um, no, uh, yeah, I like the look of this. Well, that's a good point because Danny's a magpie, and if he's saying he's not looking to change, if that's not enough for him to change his SM9 wedges, then it might not be enough for you guys. But I think bag appeal, like you've said, maybe sat in the bag mm. that has the glare, it has yeah. the look. It look. It's just more attracting because it's you know it shines, it looks nice in the sunlight and stuff. But I guess from a performance perspective, without the shine, it's gonna not put you off a, a dress. Yeah, so. I mean, for me personally, I think there's bag appeal for both of them, but I would lean towards performance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But look, we've all got our own opinion. I'm glad you were you've come tonight. Just had a little bit of depth because it might not be people who've got SM9s that are looking to change. It might be the SM7, SM8 users. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got SM9s, you know Dan's saying he's got them, and you know he wouldn't be tempted to change if his grooves are still decent. So right, I'm gonna hit five shots with each wedge. We've got that set up at 75, and I think this is going to be telling now because I think if the SM10 can get a little bit lower ball flight and maintain its spin in comparison to SM9, they really could be onto something. And we're going to see how much it actually makes a difference to my ball flight because I'm renowned for pulling the odd one left, but the SM10 helped me hit it straighter. Let's see if I can hit that number of 75 yards. 80. I'll take that. So I think what is going to be interesting on is after these five shots, if it actually helps me hit the ball a little bit straight, because they reposition the centre of gravity and they put more weight in the toe right. to try and help through release, you know, keep that club face open and square to target so it doesn't close as much. Mm. Um, and so far with the 50 yard shots, you could tell the difference. Yeah. When I saw you looking at the data a minute ago, the dispersion was a lot tighter with the uh, SM10. Yeah. I don't know if it's just placebo, but I definitely feel as though like I'm not holding the club face open as much. It's kind of just staying open. Yeah, it's just working, doing, doing, working for itself. Yeah, with with my SM9s, I actually feel a little bit similar. Like, you know that I'm always sort of having to battle the mm. ball going left. I can 
can just see where it's hitting the screen. It's, it's definitely doing a bit of a job, that higher centre of gravity. Yep. I'll be interested to see what happens to ball flat, though. Now I'm swinging with a bit of a fuller swing because it says that they're supposed to launch a bit lower. Yeah. That'll rip that one. That'll be beautiful. They're definitely all stopping on the two pens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. just do one more. So in conclusion, we're just having a look at sort of club data first. So efficiency is pretty much matching within 0 0.01. Club speed is less than, you know, it's half a miles per hour in difference. Let's see what that equates to in terms of ball data. So ball speed pretty much the same. You know, SM10, one miles per hour up, but doesn't really matter in your wedges. Launch angle the same. It's 0 0.1 degree difference. Um, if we look at distance, again, SM10 is carrying a couple of yards. It's one yard longer, but, you know, it's, um, it's not major stuff. But if we actually look at backspin, I'm not sure why it's not coming up in comparison. I've had to delete a few anomalies. I've tried to get that... Um, you know, efficiency matching, so it's within 0 0.01, so they're all consistent strikes. If we just look at the table of results, so the spin is up by about 1,000, sorry, 100 RPM on SM10 with the same strikes. They're both fresh out of the wrapper today, so one's not being used. So I think in conclusion, looking at them results, the SM10 is creating a similar trajectory in fuller shots, but with just that little bit more spin, around about 100 RPM more spin. But more in particular in the shorter shots, it's creating a little bit flatter trajectory, but still maintaining you know, the same amount of spin as SM9. So that should give you that little bit more control when you're playing close to the green to zip them in, get them in flying in, but stopping quick. I think all in all, I think for me, and I don't know, Dan's still lurking about ready to start his session. For me, there's two major points here. One, aesthetics of the golf club. I think if you've not bought an SM9 this year, you'd be very tempted into that finish if you're somebody who likes a sort of, you know, less glary finish. And I think two, if you're somebody that misses your wedges left of the green, this is definitely one that you've got to test. Because for me, Dan, I've got no choice here, but I'm probably going to be upgrading. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. If it, I mean, if you, if you miss his left, yeah. Then it's obviously it's obviously it's an obvious choice, really. Isn't it? You know, Voke is a wedge that I've used over the years. I've got no sort of like nothing ever raises an eyebrow and think, oh, I should try this wedge or that wedge. I've done it before. I've been to other wedges and it's failed. I've always gone back to Voke. But for me, that weighting in you know that higher centre of gravity, more weighting in the toe, and helping keep that club face square and, and, and more open is absolutely perfect. And I think. You know, it's so important around the green. You shouldn't have to try and feel like you're manipulating and holding anything open. Mm. If you yeah. get the club to do the work, yeah. it really will help. So, so it creates a bit of comfort as well. If, if, you, if, you know, if you know what you're going to get from the club and you can confidently you know, put your faith in it to do its job, then definitely it gives you confidence. You don't have to hide, you know, you can come in. Right. <laughs> yeah. So that were the SM10, the first look at the SM10s. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to getting these outside. Obviously, up at Huddersfield at the minute, it's wet, it's icy. Yeah. We're not going to learn a great deal outside. But we've had a look at the actual numbers, and it's safe to say that the SM10, in my opinion, well, not my opinion, I mean, the facts are there, it's a better wedge. Yeah. It's a better wedge than the SM9, and I guess that's what you've come to find out. And if Titleist, if it's true what they're saying, I didn't test the SM8 versus the SM9, but they say that every year the SM wedges get better, yeah. then this should be a lot better than any yeah. other wedge that they've created yeah. you know, before. Yeah, and, and Titleist are a brand that they are true in what they say and they only bring something out if it's actually going to be better. And so, you know, they've obviously, they've proved, proved to be right again. It's a good point because they don't churn them out, do they? No, no, they don't. Like they, I think the drivers, and next driver's coming out in, so I think, September. Like they normally bring, like every, every other big brand brings them out in, an so annual. Like, uh, yeah, like an annual thing, but they only bring out a new club if it's actually going to be better than the one it's, they produce. They run more a bit on a two-year cycle, don't mm -hmm. they? And I think yeah. that's why they hold the value a little bit more because, you know, there's less stuff on the market. Um, people, you know, you, you just don't see as much second-hand tartlets on the market as you might do tailor-made and, and sort of other brands where they churn them out every yeah. year. So, yeah. anyway, that's the SM10. It's a big thumbs-up from me. Yeah. And I think, you, you know, if you're in the market for wedges this year, it's just one you can't overlook. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. <laughs>
make sure you subscribe button and we'll see you in a couple of days time bye